AI vs Pro? That's the question I want to solve with this video. Ever since the rise of AI involved in photo editing, I wanted to compare myself to it. It all started with Skylum's Lumina Neo and Adobe's Neural Filters, which both had some pretty impressive tools. However, for the purpose of this video, my opponent will be Radiant Photo. And FYI, this is not a sponsored ad. One of the people behind this app is Elia Lucardi, a fantastic landscape photographer who is also a photo editing grandmaster. Here you can hear him destroy one of my edits I did roughly 10 years ago on fstoppers.com. He cropped part of the most important and iconic element of this. So he's walked uh, to this, you can walk all the way around this is a vantage point. And you can do I'm still very proud of that moment. Now what does this software do? Radiant Photo applies AI to what it sees and suggests an image using parameters the app thinks will improve the original image. Basically, you drag and drop your RAW file into the app and Radiant Photo will auto-tune it. From this point on, there are different options for further adjustments with a bunch of different sliders. So before we start, I suggest pausing the video, download the RAW file from the description and give it a try yourself first to see how your version compares to the AI one. Also, feel free to post your edit in the comments to share it with us. At the end, I will also share my version and my very own Lightroom workflow. So let's start this. Here we have the basic UI, which is kind of similar to Lightroom, so using it shouldn't be a big deal. Right away, Radiant Photo tells us to drop an image right there, so let's do this. Let's grab the RAW file and drop it. Right away, this app will apply some settings to make the RAW file look better. So if we drag this little icon to the right, you can see the before version and here the after version. It does look much better, it has a ton more contrast, it is a lot sharper, but what I don't like is how the colors look, especially the green color tones on the landscape. Fortunately for us, we can further adjust this by using a bunch of different AI sliders. And if you want, you can also use presets, which you can find just like in Lightroom on the left side of the software. However, I'm not a presets guy, so let's jump right into the editing. And at the moment we are in the quick mode, there are just a few sliders we can change. In this case, I do want to bump up the color, so let's do this with this slider. And all it does, it seems to be reducing the saturation, so I'm going to turn it down again. Actually, you know what, let's jump right into the advanced mode, because I do want to have more options editing this further. Intensity color and skin color are still there if you want to adjust them, but below there are a few more options available. So we have color depth, color and details. Let's start with the color depth. At this point, I really already like how this is looking, except for the colors. So my goal for the editing is to just make the green tones a little richer and maybe the blue sky a little darker. In the color depth menu, there is something called lighting. So let's try raising the slider and see what it does. And it just gives us the grungy HDR look from a decade ago. So I really don't want to use this. Let's bring it down again. I also don't want to change the contrast, but I'm interested in this slider right here. This seems to make the image a little softer. Let's bring it down to see what it does exactly. We are getting some more contrast by bringing it down. So I'm going to bring it up. And we do get, in fact, a softer image, which I like. However, still not affecting the colors. So I'm not going to change the depth of the image. No, let's not activate this one. I also don't want to change the detail balance of skin or animals, whatever that means, as well as changing the white point or the black point. Let's open up the color settings. I do have to activate them to make it visible. And right away you can see I'm getting some richer green color tones. So that's exactly what I want here. Can we further improve that by bringing up the color contrast? Let's try it out. And we cannot. Let's bring it down a bit. Doesn't look too great at all, so I'm going to turn it off. Then we have something called Farbtreue, which roughly translates to color accuracy. 
Let me activate it and it doesn't change much except for the water. Let's pump it up a bit. We do get some more contrast again, but I have a feeling the green tones do look much better at this point. But I'm not so happy about the added contrast. Let's just use a little bit of this. And then we have something which should be similar to Vibrance. Let's activate it and bring it up. And here we have that slider I was looking for. Of course, this is way too much, so I'm going to bring it down. There's also a slider called Correct Color Cast. Let's try it out. And it seems like just adding a way too strong blue color cast. So bringing it down will probably get us through the original look. And bringing it up will just make it colder. So that doesn't work as expected. I'm going to not use that. Let's deactivate it. Then there's a checkbox called Color Tone Sky. This sounds super interesting, so let's try it out. Here we can also choose from a drop down menu like a royal blue sky, sky blue, aqua, dusk, night sky, and sunset. So I would say this is most likely some pretty basic sky blue. Turning up the slider, you can see it will affect the whole image saturation, which really just looks weird. So I'm going to bring it down. Let's deactivate it to get a comparison to before. Not sure if it's improving the image. I don't think so. So let's keep this one deactivated. At this point, I really just want to make the blue parts of the sky darker. So I'm not sure if I want to use any of those sliders below. We could change the foliage color a little bit. So probably bringing up the intensity should make the landscape a little more greener, just like this. Very nice. Of course, this is way too much. And also there's a bit of the waterfall selected and the clouds. So let's bring it down. Still, you can see the color cast in the waterfall. So I'm not sure if I want to use it at all as well. So I'm deactivating this one for now. Looks much better without this actually. And then there is another corrector filter, which is probably translating to correction filter, I guess. Let's activate it. And to me, this just seems like the photo filter adjustment layer from Photoshop. So if I'm going to, let's say, make it colder, this, of course, will just apply something like a photo filter adjustment layer. So not that interesting for this shot. Let's deactivate it. Let's go ahead and check out the details tab. Right away, this looks very close to Lightroom. We have the radius, we have the details, and of course, the amount of sharpening. The only thing that's missing is the masking. If I'm increasing the amount of sharpening, everything will be sharpened just like this part of the sky, which doesn't need any sharpening at all. So I'm not going to use a too crazy amount of sharpening. Now that is it for the advanced mode. Let's check out the color grading tab real quick by clicking this button up there. And here we have the gradient masks and a tool to finalize everything. I have tried those gradient filters before. To be honest, I'm not quite sure how they work. If I activate them, we have two different forms, one a circular filter and one a linear gradient. I can adjust the size and you can see the overlay. I can try to target the sky and I can also invert it by pushing this arrow right there. And thus I can make the sky darker, but it's also affecting the landscape itself, which is a huge problem in this case. And also it's kind of adding some strange noise to the sky. So we want to head into the settings of this linear gradient by clicking this arrow right there. And you can see it's changing the exposure, contrast, lights, shadows and whites and also the saturation. I think we don't really need highlights, so I'm going to reset them, going back to zero. Also, I don't think contrast is useful in this case. Let's also bring back up the exposure which was apparently the main problem for the dark mountaintop. So there is no way for me to target the specific blue color tone of the sky. Maybe I am expecting a bit too much from an AI tool since I'm already manually adjusting too much of it. I think I'm just going to deactivate the gradient filters. Then there is one more menu we could check out, which are the finalizing tools. 
this looks very close to the basic panel in Lightroom. We have the white balance settings, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and so on. So at this point, I don't think we are working with AI anymore. That's also the reason for me to not adjust anything in here. So let's collapse that. And I guess here we have the finished image using AI software for the editing process. Overall, I would say that's not looking too bad. I really like the contrast and the sharpness. The colors are decent after adjusting them. I'm just missing some kind of option to target the sky or anything locally in general because the gradient filters aren't that great, it seems. Now, let's compare to my version. So, my edit is a lot more on the darker side of things. I also have some underexposed areas right there in the cliffs in the foreground. But another big part which will make the whole shot darker is just the darkened blue part of the sky at the top. Also, I have created way more subtle colors, especially in the landscape, which are also more going towards a warmer color tone in the yellow range. I prefer my version a lot more. However, there's one thing I think the Radiant Photo app did better and that is the sharpening of the whole image. Although there is no masking options, I think the overall sharpness is much, much better looking than it is with my sharpening method. But now, how did I edit my version? Let's check it out. So here we are in Lightroom with the same RAW file. I want to start this by bringing up the exposure since we have a little bit of underexposure and the whole shot is on the darker side. Just bringing up the exposure, giving it a more natural look. Also, I do want to bring up the shadows to counter that underexposed area right there in the center. All right. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the highlights, which will reveal more details in the sky and in the waterfall, just like that. Then we could also increase the blacks very, very slightly. This will help make the image look a little softer, which I like for shots like this. We can add a detail by introducing some texture. And then let's add a bit of clarity which will make the cliffs just look more interesting and give everything a bit more depth. Then, of course, I do want to bring up the vibrance. I want this photo to be very saturated, so that's looking like a good start. Then let's go work on this image more locally. I'm going to apply a bit of masking here and I want to start making the blue part of the sky darker, which will add some very nice contrast. For that reason, I'm going to use a color range mask Click somewhere around here, which should nicely target the blue parts, as you can see. But of course, we don't want the ocean to be selected. So I'm clicking on the mask, go to Subtract, choose Linear Gradient, and just create a linear gradient like that. Now with the mask set up, I'm going to drop the exposure. All right, and here we have a much better looking sky. And then I am going to add a linear gradient for the foreground. And what I want to do here is to just add some more clarity, which will make the waves look much better. And finally, let's use a radial gradient over the waterfall. Just want to brighten it up some more. And I'm going to drop the clarity, which will give it some kind of glowing effect. Maybe even increase the blacks a bit. All right, perfect. Then we want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's open up the HSL panel. I'm starting with the hue and the reason here is I just want to make the green color tones look a little warmer by bringing down the yellow hue. All right, looks good. Then let's open up the saturation panel. Let's bring up the yellow saturation, giving that grass some more color. I'm also going to bring up the blue saturation. Perfect. Then let's go into the luminance tab. Yeah, I'm going to bring up the yellow luminance, which in turn will make the landscape just a bit brighter. And I'm also going to drop the blue luminance, which will make the sky and the water a little darker. Just like that. For this image, I think I'm going to skip over the split toning in the color grading. I'm also not going to touch the calibration tab since I really like how this looks. Now all that's left to do for this shot is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's go in here, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. Now I do want to clean up the shot, so let's use the healing tool. 
and there's a bird which I want to remove. Then we have a little bit of vignetting up in the corner. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this AI Lightroom comparison was interesting and helpful. I hope you had a bit of fun with the raw file yourself. Again, feel free to share your version in the comments of this video. If you liked it, I would be happy if you would subscribe to my channel and I hope I see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.